Ow. Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Duke Cash in DC. Uh, this time I've got all the equipment. Hi guys, it's me. Yes, it is. And this is Nuked Files, which is apparently where Duke Nukem goes to check out the FBI building. Never having been in Washington, I have no idea if it's actually accurate or not, but I kind of doubt it. Well, I don't think it, I don't think it really matters anyway. But my immersion stuff needs to be accurate. But you're running it ten miles an hour through a ventilation shaft. Your immersion is already dead. No, Duke is awesome at crawling. He, well, and he's really fast. Yeah, he is freaking fast. He's really fast in general. It's uh, going from some other game like Left 4 Dead or God Have Mercy TF2 to this means you're like zooming along. Yeah, it's like going from Quake to anything else. It just feels so slow. The, I would va uh, I would say that this is even faster than Quake World. Damn. Just like running straight ahead. Since it's kind of harder to bunny hop along, that doesn't work as well, but it's fast, is what I'm saying. Yeah. And what's that? Uh, this is some kind of container which is burning. I don't know why, but there's like, in almost every episode, there is one. Like in the first first level of the first episode, there's one, and I'm sure there's one some other place. That's weird, but I guess yeah. you gotta have your easter eggs where you can. I pity the game that contains easter eggs, which is just burning containers. We need something for the fans, let's add a burning container. Also for those uh, with uh, informative eyes, I went in the sneaky path, since I used my devastator ammo to blow up the door, which is kind of the wrong way of doing it, I went in the right way, which is through the window. So you can go in through the front once you've blown it up, you mean? Yep. You can, but no one ever does if they're cool enough. Uh, now this, the first two maps are... I I actually like the first two maps. This is where it starts to get retarded and you get a sense that the map designer who made this whole map pack in like two months, which is eight levels or something, uh, went a bit hog wild with, well, extra stuff. There's no real linear path to where you're supposed to go. Luckily, I've played this before, so I actually know where I'm supposed to go, but if you don't, you can easily be on this level for 45 minutes. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I, it is quite easy to make the mistake of just making a map and not making it clear where to go. Yeah, like, right now I'm trying to figure out where to go. Hopefully I soon remember where to go. Also, all the security cameras show almost the exact same footage. Like this place over there. Uh, there's no key card next to it, so uh, you have no idea at this point how to open it. And this room here is... I don't know what the point of it is, from a architectural standpoint. Well, Cause... it seems like he's sort of... he started off going, yeah, I'm gonna make it, you know, sort of realistic vaguely. And then just, it didn't happen. What we need over here is a room with uh, barred windows into another room. <laughs> Yeah, See, that, look, that's the kind of thing that you saw a lot back in Build Engine, Doom Engine days. Well, it to be fair, it was easy to do. Yeah. And it was sort of vaguely impressive, I guess. <clears throat> I yeah, I mean, looking through into another room, I, I would say it's the type of thing you do before you figure out how to add a window. Yeah. Because windows were a bit tricky. Um, if you remember, like the last episode, the first key card was hidden in the ventilation. Yeah. What's the difference? So we're in the ventilation, and and there's a pipe bomb three. and a key card. Oh wow! What a surprise! <laughs> yeah. He's really varying it. He is, and look at this. You, you can easily get lost here, which is why I got out and decided to just go and open the door. See more ventilation. 
So how much of the level can you actually traverse with just ventilation? Um, you can probably you can go to every important room in the in the level through ventilation shafts. That's uh, there, that's kind of excessive. Yeah, there's. I'm not sure if it's this map or the next one where you you're forced to go through ventilation. Well, you're forced to go through ventilation here as well, seeing as you need to get the yellow key card. But you bypass security protocols by going through ventilation. Nice throw. Yeah. Thank you. I usually try it at least once and then decided it wasn't worth it. So I went with the chain gun. Well, at least you know your aim is horrible. Well, practice makes um, imperfect. Apparently. Well, guess what? Guess what this room is. Seeing as we're in some kind of laboratory and we're turning turn the corner. Uh. Oh, it opens the door. Hail to the yes, king, baby. And that's the only purpose of that room. Well, I suppose it is a fairly important button. You'd want to keep it somewhere important. In the security room behind the lab. Yeah. I'm not too sure about that. More vents. More vents. And... Here we get some... Uh, I'm guessing I'm trying to figure out what weapon to use. Since this, this add-on is kind of stingy, like the proper game gives you all the weapons pretty quickly and ammo for them. This one you pretty much run around with the shotgun and the shank gun. And some pipe bombs. And nothing else. I wonder why a lot of sort of add-ons and mods and things do that, because it ends up making it just less fun, because you don't have any of the weapons that are fun to use. Yeah, I'm one one of the great things about like Duke Nukem, the shareware version where you got like the first episode, which was six maps. You you got all like all the weapons available in the first episode. You got them in the first two levels. I think you even got them in like the first level, and then you had them all along, except for uh, the third map where you actually got uh, where you, uh, where you got captured and stripped of all the weapons. I want to get in there, uh, but there's no trigger or button to press, but I know from experience before that it has something to do with like the supercomputers over here. So right now I'm trying to figure out if I need to blow something up or not. But I think I get it now. I'm desperately mashing my use button at this point. Yeah, I remember that, just running along every single wall you could, just mashing space. And there I found it. Oh, what what is it? You need to stand on the exposed metal casing. Oh. That's what... Is, is that a message from the president? Um, It might be. I don't think Bill Clinton was that big a fan of Duke Nukem. Even though we're out to rescue him. I imagine they sort of had a lot of competition. Yeah, it's... It's it's kind of odd in a way that the aliens, after invading, would decide to use all all our all our own uh, office space to plan their invasion and not like their mothership or something like that. Well, they're comfortable enough to come down here and use our toilets excessively. Although that might just be a way of sort of insulting us. Here's what we think about your plumbing system. Exactly. And those poor people who have to clean up public toilets now have to clean up alien poop. <laughs> Security cameras in the head office showing the head office. Can you actually see Duke? I didn't see it there. Uh, you probably. I think you can, uh, but. At this point, I usually I run through the security cameras super quickly because I know it. And there's not much new to look at. Yeah. This also seems kind of a weird security feature. To get where you want, you need to use the switch Hail to the uh, king, four baby. times, I think. So we opened two doors so far, and that's the third door. Uh. The med kit. And... Whatever this place is. 
just seems kind of excessive to, instead of having one button to open that door, using the same one for three it, different... It sounds like he's sort of seen an idea somewhere. It's one of those locks where you can only open one door at once to make sure that, you know, sort of it's secure, you've got to let people through and so on, but it doesn't make sense in that situation. Yeah, I, I Damn, guess good. that actually makes sense as an explanation to why it doesn't make sense. That's... Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. <laughs> I, I'm getting confused now. <laughs> and he also loves long elevators, but then again, who doesn't love a long elevator? Down to some place where there's not that much to it. Well, you can shoot some guys. That's pretty good. It, that's always enjoyable, I guess. I never understood why you get the trip mines in regular single player play. Because you can almost never ever use them since... Well, they're trip mines and the AI is dumb. Yeah, so it's hard to get them to set it off. Now, I'm, I've am i seen a few of these like eggs and cocoons and things. Last time I checked, Duke Nukem wasn't fan fiction for aliens, so what's the deal? Um, the eggs spawn the face huggers that then after, I guess, hugging some brains, beca uh, become the octa brains, which is the floating things. Oh, so it is actually alien fan fiction of a sort. Yeah, it's it's a total alien ripoff. Nice. And you can only eat, well, they're kind of the worst part. Uh, the first blah blah blah. The worst thing about them is that if you shoot them while they're on the floor, they leave an acid uh, puddle. That hurts when you step over them. Otherwise, you can leave them alone. Hey, more vents. And you just ignore that one. Yeah, just and uh, one. yeah, I'm I'm not showing off the entire level because I know where to go, so I don't have to wander aimlessly around. We'll wait for that for the next episode, where we get to the Smithsonian. And uh, here are some more vents. I, I think I, I've seen enough vents for... Yeah, I, I thought about showing them off, and then I said, fuck it, and went down to the exit. Hooray, we're done. We are, so we can finally leave this awful, awful place. Thanks for watching. Rocket. See you next time. See you guys.